for coming. Uh, but I think uh, it's a good time to start and yeah, I'll yeah. hand it to you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, the best time of the day to everyone. Um, my name is Liel. I am a director of marketing at Friendly Technologies. Uh, here with me is Tzvi, our VP of product management. Um, thank you everyone for registering and attending. It looks like a great turn up today. Um, today we're going to um, um, talk about um, transition from TR69 to TR369 uh, TR USB. Um, TR369 USB is a new and evolving emerging golden standard for management of smart devices uh, that takes into account all of the challenges that telcos and carriers are facing um, when um, offering smart um, services or broadband services to their subscribers. And um, I think we can switch the slides. Just a few, um, just a few um, um, administra administrational points. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to raise your hand. We will see all of the questions. We'll monitor them throughout the webinar. And um, if we have time by the end, we will uh, respond to them. If not, we'll make sure to reach out to you um, and respond uh, to the questions individually. The session will be recorded. It will probably last around 40 minutes. Uh, we hope not to go over that time because we want to be mindful and respectful of the time that you um, have to spare. Um, and we hope that it's gonna be of value to you um, and uh, give you some information and shed some light on uh, the new developments in, uh, in uh, the device management, the new generation of device management uh, platform. Um, so we're going to speak briefly about friendly technologies. I'm going to walk you through our history and the background, and um, and I will hand you over to Tzvi, who will speak about um, transition from TI-69 to the USB, uh, the benefits of USB, challenges that it, it's aiming to overcome, and going to help us to carriers and telecom providers with. Um, we'll briefly cover friendly device management and um, uh, the new version and the features. And if there's time for any questions, um, we'll. Uh, respond to them as well. Um, great. So about friendly technologies, uh, whoever is not familiar with our company, we've been around for a long time, uh, have been serving carrier and CSP markets since um, um, 1900, uh, since 1997, and, uh, sorry, 1997. <laughs> and um, we have been providing software solutions uh, to carriers, and um, in 2006, um, we identified the, brand, the trend of uh, um, new generation back then of device management. We have joined Broadband Forum and developed a platform for remote device management of the CTE. Uh, fast forward to um, these days, and today we have um, hundreds of installations of our software around the globe and uh, offices in um, various parts of the world. Headquartered in Israel, we have um, offices in Ukraine, USA, Colombia, and China. And we have also a very extensive network of local channels, distributors, and um, system integrators. We are very honored and excited to be a member of Broadband Forum and OMA, and um, to be part of, um, of um, defining new standards for the management of both broadband and mobile devices that are getting smarter and more connected um, um, these days. Friendly, uh, Friendly's line of products consists of um, the standard legacy TR69 device management, which is the product that we have started with um, when it, um, the standard emerged. Um, we are also offering QE monitoring analytics um, um, module that works with our device management solution and um, Wi-Fi optimization that consists of um, both optimization of Wi-Fi experience for the home network and um, Wi-Fi mesh management. In terms of Internet of Things, um, we have launched a couple of years ago our IoT device management platform um, that manages various types of uh, devices. Um, it is multi-protocol and uh, device agnostic. Um, we have a full solution for smart home platform for smart home. Um, service um, that consists of both smart home platform management uh, management platform and um, and application for the end user and also a, web, a portal for um, the customer support representative. 
we also have an extensive line of IMT and meta science, um, such as OMA DM, Life with M2M, um, uh, TR69 naturally, and um, Kavi is going to talk more about the USB agent that we're going to launch in a couple of weeks. Um, And we can skip this slide and move on next. Um, Friendly has a few hundreds of customers around the world. This is just a few um, that we have space to uh, show you here. Uh, most of our customers are um, telecom and um, carrier uh, customers. And um, in a couple of recent years, we have also added some IoT projects uh, and IoT uh, logos to our uh, customer slide. And we're expanding and growing, and hopefully um, it will continue that way. Uh, Svi, the next. Um, Svi, so would you like to cover the, the case studies for, for the success stories that we're covering in the slide? Uh, yeah, sure. I can give a quick uh, review for uh, some of our success stories uh, that we have been uh, doing with uh, TR69 and also emerging uh, with uh, IoT different verticals. Uh, so uh, as uh, an Israeli company, we started with uh, one of the largest Israeli uh, service providers in Israel, which is Bezek. Uh, we have been, uh, we are actually deployed with every uh, service provider within our country and uh, we have emerged and also expanded greatly uh, with uh, Reliance Geo, which uh, we are doing uh, over uh, 20 million of uh, connected devices, as well as with uh, Airtel, one of uh, another uh, big uh, operator within uh, India. Uh, we have also uh, uh, some uh, big installations coming from uh, the CIS region for Russia, for Beeline, and also for uh, Telecom Romania. Uh, we have implemented effective solutions for uh, device management uh, over a variety of uh, cross networks for uh, all of these uh, uh, service providers, uh, which uh, brings us to a number of uh, hundreds of, of millions of connected devices that we are managing uh, today. Um, so, um, before we are going to dive in, I want to say thank you to Liel for giving us this uh, introduction, and I do hope that uh, we will be in the time frame. So thank you all for uh, for joining us once again, uh, for all of you around the world, if it's morning, afternoon, or evening. So thank you for uh, uh, joining our session. So let's start to discuss a bit uh, about TR69 and the way to uh, USB, the TR369 new uh, standard. So we'll start with a bit of history, where we are coming from and what is the goal and why do we need that uh, especially. So uh, in the early 2000s, there was a, a rapid expansion for uh, broadband gateways. We all know that. Uh, internet uh, service providers had started to emerge, uh, which led to the uh, to a very uh, high demand of how to manage those gateways, how to deploy, how to onboard uh, those gateways, and uh, have it done quickly uh, and in the most efficient way. Um, back then, in the days, it required uh, a lot of uh, technical uh, personnel that could have been uh, doing that work uh, mostly from customer premise uh, only, uh, sometimes using different uh, CD-ROMs uh, or even different uh, technologies in order to, uh, to configure those gateways. Uh, so uh, the service providers were looking for a technology that could uh, offer a, a very uh, robust and a easy way to manage and deploy and add those different uh, gateways. Uh, so they were actually looking how to improve the life cycle and the management for those CPEs, uh, how to maintain 
uh, those CPs and manage them and monitor, which was a great deal. You need to get some information from those devices. You want to know what is the status. You want to get some information also for devices who are connected behind them. Uh, so that led for uh, the uh, uh, for actually that led for uh, the introduction of TR69, which was uh, the CPE one management protocol, which uh, had emerged uh, back in those days uh, for managing the uh, the CPEs. So the uh, the the technology had started to evolve and we actually uh, expanded with more and more interfaces uh, for uh, other for additional devices like set up boxes a voip connected devices a wi-fi and so on so uh, also cable operators have uh, incorporated tr69 within their uh, devices and uh, they needed also our solution uh, we can see that uh, the, there is a trend within technology that there is an explosion of new technologies and challenges for both network and consumer electronics. The emerging market is actually, we can see it growing very rapidly for a IoT, for a Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi mesh. And there is a great uh, desire for um, end user control, how to manage those end users. So this brings us to the next level. This brings us to the uh, user service platform. So why do we actually need to evolve? What is the purpose of us evolving right now and turning from TR69 to USP? We are looking currently at, uh, at an order of magnitude more devices in our connected home environment. When we started uh, looking into uh, the connected home, uh, we saw that uh, back in the old days, we had a few devices. If you had a one, two smartphones, and that was mainly the, the usage of, a, let's say, a Wi-Fi users within your home. However, today uh, we can see up to 20 and 30 devices for a standard family, which are connected through Wi-Fi uh, to your uh, home router. So all of which need to be remotely controlled, managed, and in a real time using mechanisms that also can scale up. If it is within your home, so you want also an application to manage it all. Uh, like with Wi-Fi, with smart home, uh, if you have a smart TV or a video surveillance system that you would like also to integrate and manage. So we want more control over our capabilities and we want an interaction with uh, third parties. Uh, so like I mentioned, uh, we want the applications also to work everywhere. We want them to be uh, to get us the relevant information, the telemetry from different devices which are connected in our home environment, like uh, sensors for temperature, humidity, and so on. Uh, all of these require a more robust, uh, a light and a secure way of communication. So this is why a user service uh, platform has been uh, emerging and the uh, design of uh, the protocol has, uh, has been done. We are also more aware that we need to obtain a better security policy. Um, within uh, TR69, we uh, were um, much relying on the, uh, the transport layer. However, with uh, USP, we are getting more application layer security and we will uh, address this uh, in some of our next slides as well. We are constantly uh, threatened by uh, hackers which are more than ready you know, to take advantage of every uh, attack vector and get an access to uh, some vital personal information. So our solution today needs to be more secure than ever so we can protect uh, everyone's privacy. So this is where USB comes in play. It was designed to deliver all of that.
So let's take a deeper view into USP and uh, the way that USP uh, and the main features and the way that USP is uh, actually uh, being deployed or uh, about to be deployed with uh, several uh, use cases. USP is actually a system of controllers and agents. Uh, which enable us to control and set remote devices, uh, software, and hardware. An agent exposes uh, its communication with one or more controller, which is a very vital point here with USB, which means that you are not tied to one ACS as you were in, within TR69, and you can have different services uh, related and communicating with different uh, controllers. And also vice versa, several controllers can also manipulate the same agent, which is a big advantage in terms of uh, managing different sort of devices, having also a separation between uh, telemetry data uh, and collecting also information uh, like with uh, data usage, or if you want to have monitoring, uh, which will be collected through a different set of uh, uh, of uh, controllers. That is a way that you can achieve uh, quite easily with uh, the USB design. So uh, the major features, as we are uh, reviewing, are uh, we said that uh, it is a network of uh, controllers and agents, uh, which are. Uh, any application that uh, that runs on the device can actually use a, a controller. It can interact with one agent or more uh, to manage the customer network and other systems as well. Uh, you can integrate both the TR69 ACS uh, with a, a USB controller on the same network without having any additional a large technology change uh, and with a great uh, additional benefit allowing actually third-party application to manage specific aspects of customer service. So an application that uses the controller could be uh, using a controller which is a local on the local gateway as we know, uh, as if, if we, as if we're today uh, gateways installations, or with an or with a controller which is based on a cloud, or even with a controller which is on the user's smartphone. Let's say that if you are getting at home and there is some kind of a problem with the controller, you can switch the application to work directly uh, with your a mobile phone, which will be uh, acting as a, as a local controller. This might come in handy for smart home devices when you are looking into a way that uh, you need to control all your smart home devices, even if there is a problem with the internet connection. Uh, how you will have a uh, feasibility to do some uh, local management when the uh, the internet connection will uh, will go down. So in this way, uh, smartphone can actually become uh, a controller for your smart home uh, in cases that the the internet connection goes down. So you can still get some information and control your smart home devices. So that was a very simple use case, but a very useful one. Uh, using USB uh, connected devices can be deployed and onboarded without the need of on-site support. Uh, it's actually managing devices cycle becomes much easier. Firmware upgrades uh, will ensure a seamless uh, end user experience. Uh, and uh, robust access control, which are defined on the USB uh, agent, uh, can actually give us a, a better way for our support parties uh, to address any issues coming from uh, our customers, including uh, diagnostics and monitoring and uh, troubleshooting any event that the customer is actually uh, experiencing. 
So USP enables us to have different use cases to coexist on one ecosystem. This is uh, a very big idea and a very great change uh, that USP has introduced. Uh, the USP controllers and agents have a persistent connection to reduce the, the handshake. They have a very clear trust of relationship establishment, uh, which also brings us that, to the point that we can have an end-to-end -end application layer uh, uh, secured session. We have a uh, rule-based uh, access control to s different service elements for a uh, privacy and security. And we have a very flexible transport layer, uh, which uh, actually uh, gives us a, a very light and efficient uh, protocol design. So just a quick words, some quick words on uh, friendly uh, TR69 main features. So. TR TR369 defines the architecture and the protocol, but one of the main issues with uh, TR369 actually derives from uh, the new defined data model that we have, which is device 2 or TR181. Uh, this standard actually defines the objects and their properties that are used to manage and control a wide array of network elements and customer services. So this brings us a, a much more robust and a flexible way of managing different devices and device skills within one ecosystem. Uh, we can manage and monitor uh, different network interfaces, um, we can also uh, manage and monitor uh, network service and uh, clients uh, as device to all exposes us uh, elements for managing access network and security services like firewalls, DNS, networks, uh, NTPs, uh, giving us the ability to define routing policies and so on. Uh, the connection interfaces uh, that uh, TL69, we will uh, be addressing them in a, in a short while and we will see that they brings us a new transport layer. Uh, we have a better and improved performance measurement and diagnostics. Uh, the new data model allows a controller to uh, initiate and download or upload performance measurements and uh, do the uh, measurement and network mapping as well. Uh, we have, uh, we can manage uh, containers and applications. Uh, so all of these new features are added to the device uh, to our data model, TR181, uh, and it could be easily uh, achieved and maintained uh, with the use of uh, friendly technologies. So a bit of a, a, let's take a small review between the main, uh, we've taken just uh, some of the main points from that we believe are the differentiators between TR69 and uh, TR uh, and uh, USP. So we've mentioned that USP is much more flexible, scalable, standardized and secured. Uh, we can see that TR69 is actually bound to HTTP, while TR369 gives us uh, additional message tra uh, transfer protocols like COPE, STOMP, MQTT, and WebSockets. Uh, all of this gives us a very uh, light uh, and very efficient way of communicating for both uh, connected home devices and additional IoT environments. The data encoding, rather than using XML, uh, we are uh, making the use of uh, protocol buffers to encode, to encode uh, messages uh, in transport. Uh, protocol buffers uh, encoding is binary, which actually gives us a significant uh, space reduction. Uh, the 
management server uh, and the communication actually gives us a way to manage multi-controller architecture, which is one of the most important contributions of USB. Uh, TR69 was designed as a one-to-one -one relationship between a CPE and an ACS. However, USB uh, opens the door for a more flexible environment. USB agent can be controlled by multiple controllers. As I've mentioned before, they can be cloud-based gateway or even local controllers. Uh, so those are all within one uh, ecosystem for, uh, for the service provider domain. So we have already discussed uh, about the importance of security within the connected home and the way that USB uh, actually gives us uh, a, a more robust and secured manner in uh, accessing uh, the device, controlling, and also the end-to-end -end application layer security and encryption. So, uh, Friendly has, is actually offering, uh, this is, a, we, can off, we can state it as a pre-release. This is a declaration that uh, Friendly will be offering also a USB agent. Uh, we are uh, in the final phases of uh, having this agent uh, released for uh, general usage. Uh, the friendly agent will be compatible with uh, our friendly uh, unified device management platform, which I will be touching in a minute. It is designed for hardware manufacturers and a service provider who are looking to enrich their uh, environment with additional devices and connected home features uh, and also to be future ready. It has an extens extensible data model as the USP uh, specification defines. Uh, it will be a very small footprinted as we are all aware that most of these devices are uh, devices which are constrained and the uh, release will be, a, it is scheduled for a, the end of this month. So uh, if you are interested in having uh, more information about the friendly USB agent, please don't hesitate to contact us and uh, ask for a additional information. So I will, before going into the friendly device management architecture and deep diving a bit with uh, the friendly product because I want to be very efficient with the time that we have, uh, I want to give a, a quick review of the friendly uh, management uh, platform. So, uh, and I want to show you how Friendly actually gives a full solution for the service provider ecosystem for having a unified device management platform that can handle uh, different devices uh, throughout your network. So let me just... switch to our device management platform and show you Sorry. Okay. Uh, what you're actually seeing right now is a friendly a device management a platform, which is called Friendly One IoT. It's a unified device management platform that can handle and manage all your devices, a, including TR69 devices, USB, and Lightweight M2M. This is being achieved by a unique approach that Friendly is offering with a smart layer a, solution. Uh, that we are actually capable of onboarding any device that you would like to manage within your ecosystem within one platform, which means that we are also normalizing the, uh, the data and the data model for your convenience and how you are referring and seeing all the information coming from different devices. Uh, 
this is actually the way that uh, we believe that service providers will be uh, offering the services and onboarding new verticals for uh, different devices. So as you can see, we have three devices right now. These are emulators which I'm uh, running for different protocols, one for TL69, one for USB, and another one for Lightweight M2M, which is considered to be a, an, a, also uh, an IoT a standard for a, different devices. Uh, the main approach that you can see is the way that we are showing the device and normalizing the way for different devices, so which means that you can have a TL69 device or an IoT-related device, and you can have all the data model structured and uh, viewed very easily by your uh, engineers in order to maintain a very flexible uh, environment with all the functionalities that you are aware of TR69 for uh, managing the device, for managing the software on the device, for uploading uh, information, and also setting different uh, device diagnostic tasks. So as you can see, we have different devices, different protocols, but the view is actually the same view. You can uh, see that for USB, you are getting the controller information and you are getting also uh, the, the agent itself and all the information that we are getting from the device is being mapped uh, easily uh, using our smart layer uh, approach. Uh, this is a very big benefit for service providers when they are looking how to expand their current network. Okay, so this is the main issue is service providers have a network and they want to expand and add additional vectors and additional uh, use cases to be used on their network. The way to do that, and we believe that uh, it is by using a unified device management platform that can assist you in expanding to new verticals uh, without the headache of learning uh, and getting more information from uh, and having a very specialized uh, technicians and engineers in order to uh, accommodate new uh, new verticals for that matter. So also if we will just take a look at the TR, at Lightweight M2M devices that we have uh, just registered on our system, so we can see that also we are getting the normalization of all the IPSU uh, uh, data as well uh, as uh, as defined in the standard and you can see different information coming if you have different uh, telemetry data uh, these are just um, uh, an emulator that we are using in order to uh, to validate the functionality but uh, as you know these are extensible uh, also uh, data that can be added or removed according to the device itself. So that was just a quick review before diving a bit, uh, diving in with our uh, device management platform. So we've been discussing that USB brings uh, some flexibility, security, and scalability to that matter. And our platform, our device management platform, unified device management platform, gives the ability actually to interconnect with any device over any network. It could be fiber, it could be wireless, it could be a NB-IoT, LoRa, cellular IoT, and whichever network infrastructure you are using. Uh, so we are a, a multi-protocol -pro layer uh, device management platform who's uh, upholding TR69, USB, Lightweight M2M, MQTT, and also there's a spelling mistake here, I, I apologize, it should be SCIF for NIDD devices as well. Uh, but we do understand that having this is not sufficient. It means that you need to give also to the service providers tools to manage, uh, to manage all of these different 
devices. So we are offering a full set of tools for uh, having for the administrator how to manage the platform as you as I've been showing uh, with our uh, uh, device management platform, uh, and also we are offering support center. Uh, tools as well that could be used for uh, various tasks uh, and we know that one great uh, deal here is how to provision uh, new devices this would be the main uh, question when we are experiencing when discussing with service providers is okay how do I onboard a new device how do I do that for different devices will it take me a great deal of time so uh, this is why we are also introducing our provisioning portal and apis northbound apis for having uh, the uh, device onboarded in a quick and uh, easy way uh, and uh, actually there is also uh, zero touch provisioning that if we will have some time i will uh, be going through it very quickly uh, because uh, we are a bit running out of time so apologies for that uh, additional tools that we are offering are device uh, quality of experience monitoring and data analytics uh, also a uh, very extensive uh, northbound interface with different apis we are offering rest uh, apis soap xml uh, and also if you would like uh, to integrate with kafka it's also a possibility uh, we are offering also a bi a report generator tool and a third party cyber security uh, offer uh, the technology stack uh, we've been uh, discussing a bit on the application layer. We are using different set of technologies. The engine is on Java and uh, .NET Core, and a different stack of infrastructure and platform, uh, which are being utilized uh, with our system. Uh, the main device management modules that we uh, are providing is multi-protocol ACS management as we as we have uh, been seeing uh, throughout this uh, webinar uh, the provisioning portal which uh, I've been uh, addressing and admin as well user so I will uh, jump a bit ahead because uh, I want to uh, get to um to some more information uh, deriving on our system a uh, smart layer technology means that the system is an adaptive one we are learning the end device without the need for complex and a very costly professional services once you connect the device the system will map it and it will map all the data model deriving from the device this is why we are actually device agnostic which is one of our main goals and uh stand and, uh, and standards here uh, so once you connect the device the system will map it and it will bring uh, all the data uh, in a friendly and readable way uh, there are different residentials and uh, enterprise use cases that could be uh, upholded uh, we are doing a, one of our main a, a features is Wi-Fi optimization and a wi mesh support as well for troubleshooting and repair for Wi-Fi optimization. And if we will have the time, we will um, be addressing this in a, in a short while. A zero touch provisioning means that you want to onboard a, devices very very quickly without doing a very uh, long uh, process of registering the device uploading the the firmware and so on so the device are being uh, bootstrapped in a very uh, quick and easy way uh, one of the most important things for service providers is how to update um a group of devices uh, because we are discussing with uh, service providers which are uh, which have millions of devices and they need to push campaigns and get information for a group of devices uh, so this is uh, also supported uh, by our uh, platform as well as firmware and software uh, management on the on the device itself uh, 
one of the most important things is while having a unified device management, we know that we are not uh, alone in the ecosystem and we need to integrate with customers uh, ecosystem in a, in a very friendly way. So uh, we need to integrate with a variety of interfaces and services and additional platforms uh, for the service provider. Zero touch provisioning with OSS and BSS systems in order to shorten the device onboarding uh, we have an interface for a customer's CRM system for a automatic problem resolution. A CRM user can actually send commands to the device like with Wi-Fi resolution or upgrade a firmware or software upgrade on the, on the device itself, uh, change device credentials, monitoring and so on. We have an interface for external systems to transfer events and also uh, telemetry data coming from devices uh, that can be visualized with uh, our BI tools and advanced analytics. Uh, system alerts can be published to customer uh, network operating system uh, in order to maintain a proactive monitoring and avoid system degradation. Uh, we have security mechanism to integrate with single sign-on or LDAP and various tools for end-to-end uh, -to -end technicians, uh, for end-to-end -end diagnostics, sorry, that could be uh, handled by various technicians and customer support center. Uh, one of the most important things that we need to understand that a device management platform is a mission critical platform. It means that we should work in any case. Therefore, we offer uh, various types of uh, resiliency and redundancy. Uh, we can uh, implement the system in a scalable and a high availability mode with data replication between sites, which uh, will be seamlessly uh, to the end customer in case of a critical event and uh, you will have the system up and running. Uh, we should also take into consideration that the system should be always on. This is uh, the, the main goal for us. Uh, so I've been discussing a bit on different deployment options. We can be deployed on-prem, we can be deployed on a private cloud. Uh, we are cloud and vendor agnostic, which means that we can run on any cloud environment of your choice. And you can have a, also a hybrid solution, uh, which is also supported uh, within our design. So I think that we are going um, in a, and we do not have too much time. Uh, so uh, we've discussed about uh, zero touch provisioning, uh, so I will not be discussing this uh, too much. And I would uh, definitely would like to have uh, to leave a few uh, minutes for uh, questions if you have uh, till now uh, about our uh, solution. Uh, so uh, before uh, we are uh, running out of time. So if you have any questions or you would like to address any additional uh, information that uh, you saw with this uh, demonstration, uh, I will be uh, happy to, to address them. Uh, maybe I will just, before going into the session of questions, just jump ahead to show you a bit more of, uh, we've been discussing the uh, the admin uh, portal, so just showing you some slides on our support uh, portal. Uh, actually, we are having a, a revised and a, and a new layout for our uh, support center dashboards, uh, which is fully customizable. You can choose whatever to display for those for the cubes that you are seeing. Uh, and this is a very important tool for service providers and the support center, how to manage the device, how to give when, which tools are given to the support center in order to maintain uh, and troubleshoot any uh, issue which is coming from the device, like with a Wi-Fi resolution, because one of the main issues that 
uh, service providers are encountering right now with the expansion of uh, uh, home devices is a Wi-Fi resolution problem because most of the of the people do not distinguish between I don't have uh, an internet connection or my internet is too slow with uh, in in home Wi-Fi problems. This is why uh, we have been offering a solution for our service providers, which uh, identifies uh, the the network, uh, the, the location of the problem, and offers a resolution. You can check uh, and scan. Uh, the neighboring networks that are uh, actually interfering because in Wi-Fi the most common problem is network interference. Uh, it is a non-registered spectrum uh, which everyone can use and uh, you ha can have different uh, devices on the same network channels and uh, having a great interference. So our platform is actually scanning the neighboring and also uh, we have introduced uh, an application that will be used uh, by the customer itself that could be uh, for uh, self-support and troubleshooting uh, of degradation of a uh, Wi-Fi coverage within his home, uh, which will not just rely on the device itself and the neighbors that he sees, but also on the location of the of the customer within his home. Uh, so we have a lot to cover, but uh, the time is getting very, very short for us. Uh, so uh, first of all, I would uh, uh, like to uh, thank you all for uh, joining us for, for this session today. And uh, again, if you have any questions or clarifications and things that you would like to uh, address, please don't hesitate to contact us uh, via email, LinkedIn, or whichever way that you feel uh, suitable for you. Um, as I mentioned before, and we have been uh, working on the new USB agent release. Uh, if you are interested in having a pre-release uh, version of that uh, and an integration, please also uh, contact us so we can address this and uh, give you, a, give you an, uh, a proposal for that as well. Uh, so once again, thank you all for joining um, and having this uh, session, uh, this webinar with us. Uh, and I hope uh, that we had enough time to show you uh, just uh, uh, the, the working and what we are offering with TR69 and uh, also with uh, USB. So, oh, I see there are questions. So I'm sorry I missed that. I'll try to quickly respond to some of them. Um, Uh, there's a question coming from, uh, I will not try, uh, read the entire session, but I, um, the modern router should support TR69 to use functionality for connected devices. Uh, yes, they should support a TR369 USB, otherwise you have an application that can communicate in a way uh, directly with uh, our uh, device management uh, platform or with the uh, uh, actually with a device management platform, so it could be also used in that matter. Um, which let me just uh, additional questions coming. Um, oh, 
Yeah, sorry if you had some issues with the, our... Uh, yes, we do offer a software for evaluation and a demo. Uh, feel free to contact us uh, and we will also be taking your uh, credentials, Peter, for uh, uh, offering you a, a demo environment as well. Um, we'll try to say also to share the presentation that we were showing. Let's uh, for uh, you were asking which protocols friendly USB agent will support. So it will support uh, the standard uh, protocols for a uh, message transfer part, as uh, I've been showing. Uh, uh, COPE, MQTT, and so on, STOMP as well. So if you would like something else, please contact us. We will be happy to address that. Um, There is a question about uh, radio support. Uh, this is a part of uh, having a solution which is uh, within the domain controller. Uh, so most of our customers are uh, already supporting uh, some solution. Uh, but you, if you are uh, looking for a solution uh, specifically for a device management, so this is something that we can uh, also address. Uh, there's a good question if we built on top of uh, broadband forums, USB agent. So the broadband forum, we are a contributor for the broadband for forum uh, as well. So, uh, and the, our agent is built according to their uh, design, uh, but it is more extensible uh, than the offering that you will be getting uh, currently for a OBUSB if you are familiar with the open source which is uh, offered by uh, the broadband. So I think these are the, all the questions that I've been seeing. Uh, if you have anything, uh, any other question, please feel free to contact us and I will be happy to address them or uh, engage with you with our uh, pre-sale uh, team as well. Uh, so once again, thank you all for joining this session. And I, with these days, I also would like to ask you to keep yourself safe and I uh, hope we will uh, meet again uh, on our next webinar. So uh, thank you very much and uh, have a good day. Thank you.